Hi, my name is Simone Jardim and uh, we are here in Valencia Bonita today, Bonita Springs, Florida, uh, to give you some tips on the new and improved Pickleball Tutor, uh, the Plus. And uh, I hope you have fun uh, watching these tips and hopefully learning how to use some of these drills at home. I'm here with Kalindi today, and this is again the Tutor Plus. It's a new ball machine coming into the market, and it has a new addition uh, which can create spin. The game of pickleball is going to new heights, new levels, and a lot of people are putting spin on the ball. So the first drill that we're gonna do is gonna be dinking with underspin. So not only is the machine giving me underspin or a slice, but I am trying to create slice right back. The first thing that we want is to make sure that every time that we hit, we come back to this position and the reason why we want to come back is because i'm going diagonal or cross court with my opponent if i stay stationary in this corner what happens i'm not recovering and i leave the middle right wide open and my partner comes back to cover then my partner's down the line is open so i want to make sure that i hit the ball and then i come back to cover hips staying forward okay as far as the grip we want to stay with that continental grip but what we want to make sure that it happens is that we're not taking the paddle behind the hip it's staying nice and in front the face opens up a little bit and when we go through it you're gonna push through it the thing about slicing is that a lot of people have the misunderstanding that a slice is a chop if you come from a tennis background sometimes when we have strings what do we do? We chop the ball, right? But here, with the, it's a piece of material with a plastic ball. If you chop that ball, it's either gonna pop up or go straight into the net. So we wanna make sure that when we catch that ball, you're gonna take slowly through it and let the paddle follow through out in front, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple here. I might go the first one to one, two, three, four, and then go back four, three, two, one. You can do whatever pattern you like to do. Okay, so here we go. There you go, nice. And I recover every time. Nice, good. And I keep my hips nice and open. Perfect, good. Okay, now I'm gonna go to one. Good. Nice, good. And hopefully I'll get, and if I can, have, if I can take it out of the air, I will. Nice, good. There you go. I'm giving myself some compliments here. There you go. I'm working on my footwork here, my paddle staying nice and in front. That ball is coming with some underspin, so you're really gonna have to bend down those legs and get underneath, okay? So let's see it here, Kalindi. Now really work on catching. So you see, oh, she got the target. Really keep, keep that ball in the paddle a little longer. That's better, so you see how it's coming a little fast. Slow it down, slow it down. Just catch, catch. That's it, right there. Just like that. Good, better. That's it, and again, catch. Very nice, that was perfect. Good, try to get that ball out in front. Good, get. Nice. That's good, very nice. So one thing that I would suggest is that when you're doing this is that I would go for quality versus quantity. If you really work on your legs, it's gonna burn a little bit. So if you do three sets, let's say you're doing 12 dings, maybe that's where your starting point is. And then you build it up from there. Or maybe four is your starting point or eight, but quality over quantity. That is really, really important. So again, do very intense, very good footwork, nice paddle preparation versus then getting a little sloppy and all of a sudden you're taking back swings and they're not, not as good. It doesn't have to be that far from the net. You can work on that as long as it's soft because you're catching that ball and the ball is bouncing into the kitchen, okay? So we're gonna do one more time and this time I'm creating a pattern. So we're gonna do eight balls. I want one, two, three, four, and then four, three, two, one. Good, okay. Now go two. Yeah, that was a good catch though. Good, and if you can take it out of the air, those ones you can. You don't have, there you go. Good, that's it. Now four again. 
Good one. And three. Get ready. Yeah, that one. Catch it out in front. Yeah, that's, that's a very good dink. I like it. Ball machine is feeding well. Good. One more now to one. Get there. So one thing to adjust. So sometimes when those balls, because that's perfect, that's very, very realistic situation where some, sometimes your opponents thinks they come a little further into the court. Instead of backing away from the line, actually stay here and try to catch that ball. But again, that elbow, that tool later will help, yeah. is that that elbow stays here versus coming into the body, okay? So I'm gonna do one here. And what I want you to look at is just that catching of the ball. Sometimes we wanna make sure that if the ball comes a little deeper, that we catch it, nice, okay? So again, I'm keeping, see how I'm keeping my elbow out in front, I'm catching that ball, not allowing my elbow to come behind my hip, okay? There you go, there you go, good, okay? So that one, I take it out of the air, keeping my elbow here, okay? And this is a good one, I'm gonna try to take it oh, out of the air. A lot of the times, and this is typical, that we allow the ball to bounce and then we back away and then the elbow comes behind. So in order to generate a solid good dink that stays low with some underspin, we have to make contact with the ball out in front. If you can do that, that's half of the job done. Thank you for tuning in and see you next time on The Courts.